It brought us the Roaring Twenties, the Space Age, and the Information Age, the 50s and the 60s. Radio, television, satellites, and cell phones all caught up in a swirling sea of change. And it introduced a new voice in music, our voice. From the ground to the air to the sky to the concert hall, this has been the American Century. Welcome to the American Century, an exploration of America's modern musical legacy, hosted by David Dubow. The American Century is sponsored on 96.3 FM WQXR by American Century Investments, with over 40 years mutual fund management experience. Once again, it's time for the American Century, heard each Sunday on WQXR 96.3 FM at 12.05. I'm David Dubal, your guide for music by 20th century American composers. Today is Third Symphony Day, by which I mean we shall hear movements from the Third Symphony by Copland, Diamond, Thompson, Schumann, and Roram. It will be our first program on the series to feature entirely orchestral music. Throughout the late 19th and early 20th centuries, the major American cities were either founding their own orchestras or finding homes for them. Naturally, the most celebrated was Andrew Carnegie's Music Hall, which subsequently honored his name. But Chicago, Boston, Cleveland, St. Louis, Indianapolis, New Orleans, San Francisco, Baltimore, Detroit, Philadelphia, Pittsburgh, and others all built wonderful settings for their orchestras to perform in. Each city had tremendous civic pride in their orchestras and halls, and they formed the backbone of orchestral culture in the United States. Each of these orchestras did fine work in commissioning American composers to write works for them. All of these orchestras have flourished throughout the 20th century. Let them prosper in the next one also. When Aaron Copland was commissioned by the Kuzovitsky Foundation of the Boston Symphony to write a symphony, he was conscious that he was living in a country that was at the very moment producing major works in the symphonic form. The war was over, it was a new world, and Copland was fired with the ambition to write, quote, a great work. This he did, and it was Kuzovitsky who gave the Copland III its world premiere in October 1946. The work is in four ample movements. Today we hear only the second movement marked Allegro Molto. Leonard Slatkin leads the St. Louis Symphony Orchestra. Thank you. 
was Copeland with his almost unmistakable sound, or as he put it, sonorous image. You heard Leonard Slatkin with the St. Louis Symphony in the second movement of Copeland's third symphony. Some call it the Great American Symphony. It's time to explore the first movement of David Diamond's Third Symphony on Third Symphony Day on the American Century. Diamond was early influenced by Copland. He was born 15 years after Copland in 1915. Primarily an absolute musician, Diamond's output has chiefly chamber, concerto, symphonic works highlighted by his nine symphonies, works of strong intellectual and emotional bearing. Each of Diamond's symphonies is built like an extension bridge. They are strong and large in conception. I think myself that Diamond's musical immortality will be judged by these works, and I think that this form was most conducive to his musical thinking. It's exciting to know that Diamond was working on and completing his third symphony while Copland was writing and completing his own. Diamond had been promised throughout the late 40s performances of the Third Symphony, but somehow they hadn't materialized. One day in 1950, he was talking to Charles Munch, then conductor of the Boston Symphony. Diamond told the French conductor of his plight. Showing him the Third Symphony, Munch cried, but this is ridiculous. We must have it performed. I will do it next season. And so it happened, and let's hear it, or at least its first movement, with Gerard Schwartz directing the Seattle Symphony.
Diamond's first movement of his third symphony was heard under the direction of Gerard Schwartz, the orchestra, the Seattle Symphony. The time has come for a small break in our third symphony edition of the American Century. Stay tuned for movements from Thompson, Schumann, and Roram's third symphony when we return. I'm David Dubal, and we continue our third symphony adventure, or marathon, with a movement from Randall Thompson's third symphony in A minor. Born in 1899, Thompson lived until 1984. Don't confuse him with Virgil Thompson, the great critic and composer born in Kansas City in 1896. Randall is best known for his choral music, but his three symphonies, especially numbers two and three, were very often performed during his lifetime. The second, indeed, garnered 500 performances. The third symphony was performed for the first time in 1949. We hear the second movement. The music is full of action and defiance, the composer says, and he marked it Allegro Appassionato. Let's hear Andrew Schenk conducting the New Zealand Symphony Orchestra. <laughs>
And that was Randall Thompson's second movement of his third symphony. The orchestra on this disc is the New Zealand Symphony with Andrew Schenk conducting. And he conducted it in the Michael Fowler Center in Wellington, New Zealand. 
Next, our program sampling the third symphonies of American-born composers, we hear the Toccata Finale of William Schumann's Third Symphony. William Schumann was born in New York City, as so many American composers have been, and his year, 1910. His Third Symphony is one of the best of his ten symphonies, in my opinion. The Toccata is rugged and virtuosic, and a fitting conclusion to the other movements, where Schumann explores the Baroque forms of Passacaglia, Fugue, and in the third movement, chorale. Here then is the fourth movement composed in 1941 of William Schumann's Third Symphony. We hear it in a magnificent reading by the New York Philharmonic with Maestro Bernstein conducting them.
That was Bernstein leading the New York Phil in the Takata movement from William Schumann's Third Symphony. Today we celebrate Third Symphony Day on the American Century. We've been hearing movements of the Third Symphonies of Copeland, Diamond, Randall Thompson, William Schumann. I'm sorry to say that we won't have time for what is perhaps the masterpiece of Roy Harris, his Third Symphony. It was composed in 1939, but its one movement form in 20 minutes precludes it today. However, let's not mourn for we conclude with Ned Roram's highly effective Third Symphony, which we hear movements four and five. The fourth movement is slow, and the composer said it was his farewell to France, where he lived for eight years. Let's listen to Roram's Third Symphony, the late Maurice Abravanel, so honored in Utah, leads the Utah Symphony Orchestra.
On WQXR's The American Century, we have just listened to movements four and five of Ned Roram's Symphony No. 3, Maurice Bravanel conducting the Utah Symphony Orchestra. Well, I hope you were pleased with our visits to movements from the Third Symphonies by American Masters. American Century Investments is pleased to sponsor the American Century on WQXR. American Century is proud to celebrate 40 years of experience in mutual fund management, providing investment services to millions. Return with us next Sunday at 12.05 p.m., where we celebrate the American composer of the American century. This is David Duval. Thank you for listening.